Although you wouldn't know it, recently declassified documents out of the Senate Judiciary Committee have shown and revealed the informant or subsource that Christopher Steele used to create his now debunked and infamous Steele dossier. And it isn't just the gigantic circus that's going on like it always is that would prevent you from knowing these things, but also the typical horrible coverage done over the situation by the mainstream corporate legacy bullcrap media. A couple of videos ago I was complaining about the DNC Podesta email leaks and how they made the story about the leaks themselves instead of the actual content of the leaks. And here the New York Times has chosen to use the same old worn out tactic with this story as well. Instead of talking about the fact that Christopher Steele's subsource turned out to say that the entire Steele dossier was discredited and that that person had told the FBI that a long time ago. This is the headline. The FBI pledged to keep a source anonymous. Trump allies aided his unmasking. After a Russia expert who had collected research on Donald Trump for a disputed dossier agreed to tell the FBI what he knew about it, law enforcement officials declassified a roadmap to identifying him. We're not reading that article. Instead, we're going to look at Greg Jarrett. Christopher Steele's secret source for anti-Trump dossier is finally exposed. It is now up to U.S. Attorney John Durham to hold corrupt people accountable with criminal indictments. The fabulist behind the infamous and discredited anti-Trump dossier has finally been exposed. His name is Igor Dechenko. He is not some mysterious Russian agent operating in the bowels of the Kremlin. Dechenko is a Ukrainian-born resident of the United States who worked as a senior research analyst for the Washington, D.C. liberal think tank, the Brookings Institution. When the dossier was invented in 2016, the president of Brookings was Strobe Talbot, a longtime friend and ally of Hillary Clinton. Her campaign provided the cash for the phony document that was composed by ex-British spy Christopher Steele. Talbot helped fuel the Trump-Russia collusion narrative, but it was Dechenko who supplied Steele with most of the false stories contained in the dossier. Dechenko's identity, concealed by the FBI for three and a half years, was uncovered by clever cyber sleuths and thereafter confirmed by his attorney. Beginning a mere four days after Donald Trump was inaugurated January 2017, FBI agents interviewed Duchenko during three successive sessions. A summary of their findings, but with Duchenko's name redacted, was recently declassified and released to the public. The stunning 56-page report revealed how the accusations supplied by Duchenko that Trump colluded with Moscow were false and fictive, yet the Bureau kept the information carefully hidden. Instead of revealing the truth and ending the investigation of the president, then-FBI Director James Comey escalated the case. Once fired, he stole government documents and leaked them to the media for the purpose of triggering the 22-month-long probe by special counsel Robert Mueller that eventually concluded that there was no evidence of a collusion conspiracy. Make no mistake, it was the dossier that propelled much of the FBI's collusion witch hunt, as well as the warrants to spy on Trump campaign associates. Associate Carter Page. Other scant evidence was discarded by the FBI early on, such as campaign advisor George Papadopoulos hearing a rumor that Russians had obtained Clinton's deleted emails. Although Papadopoulos copped a plea to lying to the FBI, disseminating rumors is not a crime. He had no direct contact with Russian operatives. With the help of an undercover agent, the Bureau realized that Papadopoulos was innocent and that this avenue of collusion was a dead end. The newly declassified FBI report that explains how Dechenko served as Steele's subsource for nearly all of the dossier's absurd fables is a cautionary example of how conjecture and lies based on multiple hearsays can take on life of their own and hold a presidency hostage. In March 2016, Steele recruited and paid Dechenko to dig up dirt on Trump. The Brookings researcher slash analyst seemed desperate for money. He told FBI agents that he, quote, felt like he had to report something back to Steele to justify the monthly salary he was receiving, so he trafficked in gossip to keep the paychecks coming. Facts and truth were irrelevant. In telephone calls and voice communications through Skype, Dechenko spoke with a handful of people he knew in Russia and others he described as random assistants. 
associates. Some were barroom buddies with whom he would drink heavily. They traded fairy tales about Trump. It was nothing more than prattle and drivel. A guy told a guy who told me that something connected to Trump might have done thus and such. You get the picture. It wasn't reliable intelligence. It was scandalous junk derived from speculation and open secrets. Dachinko insisted that he told Steele that his information was just rumor and speculation and in that he had not been able to confirm the story according to Justice Department Inspector General Dachinko said that Steele misstated or exaggerated the hearsay that he furnished for example Dachinko claimed he spoke with staff at the Ritz Carlton in Moscow about the salacious story of Trump engaging in sexual improprieties inside a hotel room the staff laughed it off but Steele didn't care he was determined to use it against Trump he included the sordid tale in his dossier and then peddled it to both the FBI and the media in order to destroy Trump, who he admittedly loathed. Steele confided in Justice Department official Bruce Orr that he was desperate to stop Trump. Of course, the liberal media was more than happy to appropriate the steel dachinko garbage. The New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, and MSNBC all treated it as gospel without ever attempting to confirm the accuracy or veracity of any of the ludicrous allegations. It should have been obvious to any responsible journalist that the far-fetched assertions were cobbled together by someone with a motive to smear Trump. Anyone with half a brain who actually read the dossier when BuzzFeed published it in January 10, 2017, knew immediately that it was a work of fiction. It read like a horribly written spy novel. It was truly laughable. In my 2018 book, The Russia Hoax, I wondered how anyone with an ounce of intelligence could take it seriously. From his book, on its face, the dossier was a preposterous collection of rumors, innuendos, supposition, and wild speculation. At least one part of it contained demonstrably false statements. In its entirety, the set of documents incorporated not a bit of direct evidence. Instead, it was based solely on multiple hearsay accounts from inherently unreliable sources in Russia who were, notably, experts in lies and disinformation. It should come as no surprise that Jachinko worked for the Brookings Institution. A published paper by him is still listed on its website. At the very time that Strobe Talbot was president, Talbot, a dedicated Clinton loyalist, penned a frenzied column stating with certainty, We already know that the Kremlin helped put Trump into the White House and played him for a sucker. Trump has been colluding with a hostile Russia throughout his presidency. I haven't seen Talbot's retraction or apology since the Mueller report came out, nor do I expect one. He has a lot to answer for, including his own contacts with Steele. It just so happens that Talbot's brother-in-law is Clinton's sycophant, Cody Shearer, who created what became known as the second dossier. Remarkably, it echoed several of the identical fantastic allegations as the original steele Dechenko dossier, equally bereft of evidence or corroboration. Plugging his book again, I explain how some of Shear's own accusations against Trump were transcribed into the last few Steele memos, which were then passed on to the FBI. Hence, Clinton's campaign didn't just commission the dossier, her allies contributed to its contents. The FBI knew all of this, but continued to insist that Steele was reliable and the dossier was credible, even in the face of incontrovertible evidence to the contrary. The Bureau scrupulously guarded their secret, knowing full well that disclosure would ruin the public's trust in the FBI. Attorney General Barr and DNI Ratcliffe are to be commended for having the courage to declassify the documents that have exposed the FBI's malfeasance and malevolence. Did top officials at the FBI commit crimes? In my judgment, yes. Laws were perverted or ignored. The law enforcers became the law breakers. When powerful forces in government abuse their positions of trust to subvert the legal process, democracy is threatened. Reverence to the rule of law is lost. It is now up to U.S. Attorney John Durham to hold corrupt people accountable with criminal indictments. And Greg Jarrett's right. It is all in John Durham's court now. We are sitting here hoping that something comes of all of this because at this point it has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt exactly what went on here and it was a soft coup against President Trump whether you wanted him to be in president or not 
we must address this entrenched bureaucracy that took it upon themselves to try and treat the United States of America like a third world nation that they could overthrow. And I don't even want to hear about that stupid New York Times article because the other documents that were released was a document of Agent Strzok of the famed Lisa Page struck text messages going through a New York Times article piece by piece and finding nine severe inconsistencies or outright falsehoods that he had identified just in this article. Now I'm going to link all the documents in the description guys. Have fun going through them. It's just more of the same. These guys thought they could get away with it and they took a run at him because they had so much to cover up for. And speaking of so much to cover up for, I'm going to end this episode today with um, John Solomon being interviewed by his own employee, but I mean, we'll move past that at Just the News about his upcoming book. And he drops a little bit of a bomb. So enjoy the last three minutes, guys. Thanks for liking, sharing, subbing the channel. It really helps. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Check this out. It was your new book, Fallout, uh, talking about the Russia collusion situation that the media is still trying to push this narrative. Does that surprise you? It does not. I mean, <laughs> even in the last few days, there were declassified documents from the FBI that show nine, nine New York Times stories the FBI had determined were false about the Russia collusion story. When we see that level of misconduct in journalism, we can understand how this thing got out of control, how it went from a political opposition research uh, project from a guy at MI6 who doesn't, by his own admission, said, I don't know if it was true when I gave it to the FBI, to a scandal because the American media kept pushing the same false facts time and time again. And that's how this, kind of, this country went through three years of unnecessary heartbreak. Unnecessary. And, and the title, Fallout, explain that. Well, uh, we want to play off the word nuclear because a lot of what uh, we learned about the scandal was that its origins were in the desire of Hillary Clinton, Obama, Joe Biden to hide one of their biggest foreign policy failures in their term. And that was the reset reboot with the Russian relationship. They came in in 2009, shortly after George Bush left, shortly after Russia had invaded Georgia, the state, uh, the country of Georgia. And uh, the Democrats came in haughty and said, we can change this. We'll give uh, Vladimir Putin lots of gifts. He needs help with the economy. We'll give him billions of dollars of nuclear contracts. We'll let him buy the uranium under our soil, the uranium one deal. We'll help him build his own Silicon Valley called Skokovo, right outside of Moscow. And we gave billions of dollars, uh, un untoward expertise, and we just gave it to the Russians with the idea they'll turn into nice guys. Kind of perestroika, too, if you remember the Gorbachev years. Um, once Putin got everything he wanted, he pulled the carpet out from under Clinton, Biden, and Obama, and he invaded Ukraine. And then the Obama administration realized, wow, we have an international crisis, but we also uh, have a lot to hide. Because during that period when we were cozying up, the Russians were given lots of things. They were given Bill Clinton a $500,000 speech. They were given millions of dollars to the uh, Clinton Foundation. They were investing in John Podesta's company, millions of dollars in a company, clean energy company that John Podesta sat on the board. They were paying the chief energy advisor for Joe Biden money as for advice. And so they had not only a failed foreign policy, they had a trail of corruption and enrichment around the foreign policy failure. And so the fallout is that to cover that up, they set out on a mission to neutralize Russia as an issue in the 2016 campaign. They did so because Hillary Clinton did a poll in June of 2015. It's one of my favorite revelations in the book. My colleague Seamus uh, Berner found this document after we did some interviews. Um, they, of all the things that had happened in Hillary Clinton's uh, life, the scandals, Whitewater, Rose Law Firm billing records, Vince Foster, uh, the Benghazi tragedy, the email scandal, the number one thing that voters in this poll told Hillary Clinton would made them least likely to vote for them was the thought that she and Bill Clinton had traded on U.S. policy, got rich off of the Russia policy. 53% of people in the poll said that was the thing they most were concerned about Hillary Clinton. So she set in motion a uh, opposition research project to neutralize Russia, scare off the Republicans, find something on the Republicans that will leave Russia alone. And that's what gave us Christopher Steele, the FBI, and the entire investigation. So the fallout of the failed policy, nuclear mostly, um, uh, is what caused all of this unnecessary scandal in the Trump administration.